Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Grease, Chief Scientist and Executive Director of the Digital Twin Institute with an appointment at the University of Central Florida. And today I'd like to talk to you about the digital twins and the metaverse. So if I look at the physical world and the virtual world, um, we are in terms of our capabilities, what I call space unconstrained. In the physical world, we can have the individuals and products on different sides of the globe. And in order to be able to put them together, we need to physically move one to the other. And so that takes uh, a lot of time, energy, uh, and material in order to be able to do that. We are space unconstrained in the virtual world. We can, in essence, move those two things together virtually, such that if I'm looking at diagnosing an engine uh, problem on, on a plane, the expert can do that no matter where they are in the world. So they have access simultaneously and instantaneously to physical products that they do not have in the physical world. With digital twins, we are also time unconstrained. In the physical world, we are at the mercy of a physical clock. Um, the only way we can go forward in time is to have the, the ticks of the clock pass us by. So at every time X, what we really want to do with digital twins is we want to capture that information of what's occurring. And that's what I call replication. Uh, and so what we want to do is have that data populate our digital twin in terms of the virtual space. We can go back in time, which we cannot do in physical space, and we can employ forensics to find out what happened. In the physical world, we have to kind of do uh, abnormal things to understand what occurred in the past, where we can really reverse the arrow of time in the virtual world. But the real advantage is being able to uh, advance the clock to see what's going to happen in the future. So it's a crystal ball in the future, and we have the ability of being able to do that. And it's what I call front-running simulation. And every time, time X, we will be able to take the data from the physical world and predict, at least probabilistically, what will happen in the virtual world. And this is a huge, huge opportunity in terms of, of preventing the waste of resources by having adverse effects happen that we can uh, avoid by being able to uh, prevent them. So the digital twin is evolving. And if I'm looking at sort of information evolution in terms of the amount of sophistication, and then the movement from the phys physical to virtual maturity, as we move from the work from the physical world into the virtual world, uh, it starts off with, since time immemorial, the traditional idea that says as soon as we had an idea, it had to take physical form in terms of, of, of a sketch, a blueprint, uh, a physical 3D prototype. The beginning of the 2000s were amazing from the standpoint that we moved from a traditional to a transitional, meaning we were able to have in our virtual world uh, 3D images, we moved from to IoT, and of course the digital twin takes place at that particular point in time. Where I will contend we are today is what I call the conceptual or ad hoc uh, version of digital twins. We do have digital twins, but the data and information is something we have to pull together on an ad hoc basis in order to have the data and information that we need in, in order to be able to uh, replace wasted time, energy, and physical material. Where I think we're, we'll soon be, and I think this is where the, where the metaverse comes into play, is having these what I call digital twin platforms, where we'll be able to merge different digital twins, and it will basically allow us to have a replication of the physical world in the virtual world and be able to uh, do modeling and simulation uh, in terms of being able to, to uh, track where the physical products are and even sort of predict their performance. Where I believe we're going is what I call the intelligent digital twin platform, which is in essence a crystal ball into the uh, world that allow us to be able to, to take our products at every time X 
uh, take the data from the physical world and those products and be able to predict probabilistically uh, what's going to happen. So that'll allow us to prevent adverse uh, events by being able to predict them and fix them before they occur. And so this idea of front running simulation at every time X to be able to look out into the future at some uh, granularity and be able to predict performance is going to change the world dramatically. I'd like to finish off by giving you my view of the digital twin metaverse. And I understand that this may be a, a unique view and that everybody has all their own views right now uh, about the metaverse, which is, which is still a little fuzzy, but this is my view of, of what the digital twin metaverse uh, will entail. And in terms of capabilities, uh, it, it has to twin the physical universe consistent with our physical laws. And so the metaverse of the digital twin needs to reflect what the physical world does. It needs to have persistent physical atom-based material characteristics. So if I lengthen a steel beam, it has to not only lengthen the beam, but it has to add physical weight. It has to have persistent forces act upon atom-based materials. And so if the force acts uh, on a particular material, it has to do it consistently across all the, those materials in the, in the metaverse. So we can't have forces acting one way uh, on part of the product and a different way on a different part of the product. We have to have persistent time, and I'll talk about that, but, but all, the, uh, all the occupants of our metaverse has to have the same time base. We can't have some things speed up in time and some things lag in time. There has to be a persistent time basis in the digital twin metaverse. And it requires digital twin interoperability. So, so as we move different digital twins into it, they all have to participate uh, as if they were physical items in the physical universe. So uh, interoperability, I think, is a big issue that we need to work on. The meta capabilities of the metaverse, so there are additional capabilities that we're going to have. As I said, we are time unconstrained. So even though we have persistent time, we can have different time cadence and directions. We can go backward in time, we can go forward in time, uh, years, decades, uh, in order to see what's going to happen with, uh, with our digital twins. We are space and constrained. So, so in the physical world, we have to have geospatial adjacency. Um, we will not be able to require that in the, in the metaverse. So we will have people have instantaneous and simultaneous access to things that are not ge geolocated with them. And then finally, we can have material granularity transparency. So we can see through walls um, and be able to, to make uh, parts of our digital twin transparent so we can see inside that. So these are just some of them. I, I don't, can't say I fully understand what it will all entail, but these are sort of my initial reactions to a digital twin metaverse. So I wanna come back to my original slide and basically reinsert the sub-virtual spaces that I show below because because we will have multiple metaverses uh, at our fingertips to be able to do things. And like we had types for the digital twins, we're gonna have metaverse types here also. So in the prototypical phase, the digital twin prototypes when I'm creating products, um, we will have a synthetic reality. It will have to have the same uh, laws uh, and rules of the physical universe, but we can basically set the conditions uh, to be able to develop, create products, and be able to, to test them in uh, our, our metaverses. Um, we can have multiple spaces with identical initial conditions and be able to, to test our products. So we can crash test the same vehicle over and over again with, with different uh, initial conditions in order to see how that's gonna perform. So, so this is our, our multiple spaces, our virtual spaces in the diagram below. Um, we will be time, space, unconstrained. So we will be able to test products over the years. So vibration tests that will occur, you know, over decades to tell us where we're going to have weak spots in our products. When we move into the digital twin instance and aggregate, the requirement here is that the physical product be connected to its uh, digital twin uh, 
throughout its entire life. And so, so now we're going to move sort of into that top space, a, a virtual space that actually uh, will be a single space. It, it is the physical virtual world reality that we're uh, encompassing and entailing at a particular point in time. We will be space unconstrained, but we can't be time unconstrained except to predict to the future. And we can overlay our digital twin on our physical twin. So we can basically not only see the physical item, we can see the operations and we can see key characteristics uh, that we're getting from the digital twins overlaid onto the physical twin. So augmented reality is gonna be a key here. And finally, the idea of front running simulations, doing probabilistic predictions is going to be key for us. And, and so these are the types of things that we're going to have in what I envision for the digital twin metaverse types. Um, the, the reality is, is that in, we have a physical product uh, connected to its digital twin. It will need to reflect what exactly is happening in the physical world. But for testing and things like that, we will have the ability of being able to, to move into the, the virtual spaces, subspaces, and be able to do predictions. So this is selected publications um, that you can look at that are out on my research uh, gate site uh, or on my YouTube channel, and it should give you a, a little more information. But it's an exciting period of time in terms of the digital twin and the metaverse. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention and hope you have a great rest of your conference.